Burkhardt, one of eight left-handed batters in this Michigan lineup, so that made the pitching decision a little bit easier for Donna Papa. She goes with the only lefty on the staff, a freshman, Lily Backus. Yeah, and Backus has gotten a lot of innings so far against ranked opponents. She's gone against Georgia, Ohio State, Missouri, and also South Carolina. She comes from the left-hand side. She is deceptive, has very good spin, and likes to mix east and west with her curve and screwball, and also up in the zone with her rise. And she will face Lexi Blair. Away we go on a Tuesday in Carolina. And the first pitch, a strike right on time at 5.02, as called by Donald Purnell III, who's behind the plate. Here's that Michigan lineup, eight left-handed batters, including Blair, who's the reigning Big Ten Player of the Year. Burkhart and Carson in the three and four spots hitting very well. A couple of strikes to start from the freshman Backus. The other umpires, Randall McLam is at first, Eddie Hall is at third, and today's three-man crew. The senior Blair from Winter Garden, Florida. It's one of the air to left. This is end of foul territory, and Alex Brown just ran out of room, so Blair stays alive on 0-2. Lexi Blair leading the Wolverines right now with an 11-game on base streak. Hit in eight in a row. Starting to find her stride again after a little bit of a slower start. And that's been the case for this Michigan offense writ large. Last couple of games we've seen the Wolverines score double-figure runs. Played a very difficult schedule to start the year. They haven't hit for a lot of power. See Blair who had 22 extra base hits a year ago, yet to hit a home run. But Carol Hutchins feels like the team is coming around in the middle of this spring big trip. Blair down swinging, though, and a great start for the Tar Heel freshman Backus, a five-pitch strikeout. Yeah, it's a big deal to get a former Big Ten player of the year on a strikeout to lead off the game. Great pitch location that is not only moving away from Blair on the outside corner with the curveball, but a little bit down, too. A lot of strikeouts this year for the freshman Backus. And one to begin tonight, Annabelle Weidrup. Another freshman will start and miss a bunt for strike one. Weidrup, one of the most highly touted freshmen in the nation, all the way from Hoover, Alabama to Ann Arbor. Asked Carol Hutchins about it, said, how'd you get Annabelle Weidra out of Alabama all the way to Cold Ann Arbor? She said, well, why wouldn't you want to go to Michigan? She basically gave us the sales pitch, and she was <laughs> right to do so. Annabelle Weidra, the first player in the history of the state of Alabama to come to Michigan. A slow ground ball, not an easy play with Weidra's speed, but it is made by Skylar Brooks, and two quick outs for Lily Backus. Carolina defense, the veteran Sarah Jubis, grad transfer from James Madison up the middle with sophomore Brooks. They've had a few different left fielders this year due to injury. Brown, maybe the fourth string choice to start the season, is filled in admirably there. Taylor Green behind the plate, and she holds on to strike one from Backus to Burkhart. Oh, you got to love the way that Backus is just going right at these Michigan hitters. First pitch strikes, strikes to all lot. three. That one is hit well by Burkhart, and Christina Burkhart does to the heels what she did for the heels so often, a leadoff single for the Carolina grad transfer. You would think that maybe she might be a little bit nervous, right? I mean, it's kind of intimidating to go back to the field that you once wore the opponent's uniform, and now you're in a different uniform. But for the year that Christina Burkhart is off to so far, just not letting it phase her whatsoever, continuing to do what she does best, and that's get on base. She's now 24 for 48, so make it an even 500 for Christina Burkhart. One for one against her old team. And it brings up Hannah Carson. 
This one nubbed to third base, and Middleton's throw is just in time. Good start for the freshman Bacchus. She faced four lefties. She got out three. Heels bats when we return. You and me, partner. Center of town. High noon. Nope. Daisy's got last one lessons at noon. High two o'clock. That work? I got a spur fitting at two o'clock. How's about three? We don't need any more overscheduling, but we could all use more ways to save. What about Tuesday? I think we should explore a few solutions. Grammarly suggestions catch when your tone might undermine your message. And it offers suggestions to make you sound more confident. Let's explore a few solutions. Try Grammarly today at Grammarly.com. There are not many better combinations in the country than Alex Duraco and Megan Bobian, the veteran pitchers for Michigan. It's the lefty Bobian in the circle today. Wolverines a 167 team ERA, and these two have been co-aces, Amanda, for the last couple of years. Yeah, they work really well together, considering Bobian comes from the left-hand side. Starocco, more of a power right-handed pitcher. Bobian will throw in the low 60s. She has really good spin, but Kevin, she changes speeds very well. You'll see her change speeds all throughout every at-bat, and that's what makes her crafty. Bobian's going to face Bree Stubbs to lead off for North Carolina. Eight and six Tar Heels, nine and five Wolverines, or nine and six Tar Heels, beg your pardon, as Stubbs takes high from Bobian, Jr., who, much like Michigan's leadoff hitter, has an 11 game on base streak of her own. Third year starter Stubbs. will take ball two. Facing a tough pitcher in Bobian, and the fact, too, that she's a fifth year senior. so. She's an All-American her freshman year. She has a ton of experience at Michigan. And you saw that she had an inflated ERA so far up to this point, just over three. But her entire career, she's never finished a season over two. So um, I would think that her ERA will go down as she continues to get more innings and gets more comfortable with this fifth year. A little bit of a shock to the system for some of these Michigan players. We were talking with Carol Hutchins about this. Two years ago, shortened season, last year, Big Ten only year. The accolades and the expectations are still high for Bobby. I mean, she's faced very tough competition so far. Hope if you're a Michigan fan, is that'll only make you better. Down the stretch, as here's a great diving play by Hannah Carson, the catcher, for the first out. Hannah Carson was right on top of this. She knew exactly which way to turn. She knew exactly where the ball was and was able to lay out for it. Remember, this is not her home field. The first time likely that she's played here and is able to come away with an out, an important out at that with the, with the leadoff. Our first Jen Schroeder specialty <laughs> of the season, you and I. That's right. <laughs> Here's Skylar Brooks. Off speed for strike one to start her from Bobian. Brooks, the Tar Heels batting average leader at 351. Good speed, good slap hitter. Can hit to all fields, the sophomore from Texas. Carolina team has struggled a little bit offensively this year, just 247 as a team. Stubbs at 350, Brooks at 351. They're not power hitters, but they have set the table well for Donna Papa in the one and two spots. Question for Carolina, can they find the power behind those two? Yeah, it's surprising when you look at both of these teams' home run numbers, their power numbers, they're just... Now we're, you see uh, with some other teams, like example, like Duke, who's hit over 30 home runs this season, well on, on their way to be able to break their home run record. But you're seeing a power surge all across the nation, but you see single-digit home runs for both of these teams. Carolina just one player with a home run, Kiana Jones, who has all three of the Tar Heels homers in their first 15 games. Three and one for Brooks. Carolina number two hitter. 
Bumpus on the ground to third and foul. You see how drawn in Taylor Bump is against Brooks, who can slap. She'll back up a little bit with two strikes. And a full count pitch coming. Yeah, Michigan with the veteran of Taylor Bump over there at third base, and then freshman up the middle with McVeigh and Weidra. A young talent on this Michigan team with a good mix of veterans, too. One of those veterans, Bobian in a circle, looking to get Brooks. And this is slow ground ball, will be a tough play, and there is no play for that young shortstop, McVeigh. Brooks shows off her speed with an infield base hit. A handshake for Odyssey Alexander at first. Carolina's first base runner. And that's all Brooks is trying to do, is just hit the ball to the left side. It's a soft slap because she got a little bit jammed. Wasn't well hit, more of a miss hit, but it works out for Skylar Brooks to get an infield single and find a way to get on base. Brooks now up around 360, and 14th hit in 16 games. Sarah Jubas, number three hitter. And a strike to start her off. Well, the last time you and I were together, Amanda, we were calling Sarah Jubas' games in Oklahoma City. She was the shortstop for the James Madison Dukes. The great feel-good story of college softball last year. Hit a couple of home runs in the World Series against Oklahoma, including a three-run homer to start the World Series in that first game. She pops to shortstop here, and McVay's throw is in time. So Brooks surprisingly doubled up. And a heady play by the freshman McVeigh in inning ending double play to take us to the second. Hey, bud. Thanks for coming out to cheer me on. Dad, I'm, I'm always here. I'm always here for you, too. Okay. Go, Dad. <laughs> Thanks. No, everyone's passing you. In the... oh, you got it, Coach! Switch to Progressive and you can save hundreds. You know, like the sign says. America's been fun. One World Series, Sarah Jubis was the James Madison shortstop. And, of course, Odyssey Alexander, their ace, also hit. Defeated Oklahoma, Oklahoma State. Really stole the eyes of the nation for the ultimate Cinderella, James Madison. Unranked team, first ever unranked team to win the first two games of the World Series. Odyssey is going to pitch professionally in Japan, maybe in a couple of weeks, but she had some time off. North Carolina had an opening on the staff. One of their assistant coaches is on maternity leave right now, and so Odyssey's filling in as a volunteer coach. And she's been a brilliant volunteer coach by what we've heard from Donna Papa. Chelsea Dobbins, their associate head coach, out on maternity leave. Odyssey has been helping call the pitches. And a time where she's only with the team for a few weeks, there's Annie Paquin next to her, who's in her second year, and they've been calling the games together. It's pretty cool that a pitcher-catcher combination like Annie, formerly Aldretti, who started at Tennessee and then transferred over to Cal, and she gets to work together with Odyssey Alexander and call a really great game. Like, I've heard, talk to some of the coaches who have played UNC, and they definitely notice that they call a great game together. It's a good looking pitch from Backus on Taylor Bump, strike two from the freshman Backus. So, Odyssey was living in Raleigh and then ended up coming over to join the coaching staff kind of late, and they don't know how long they're going to get her before she leaves to go play in Japan. And Donna Papa told us it could be a week, it could be two weeks. It was really a fluke sort of situation that led Odyssey to be available and that led North Carolina to have that opening. Chelsea Dobbins, who's been there for seven years, out. In fact... Early in the season, MJ Fernbach, who's the associate head coach, she missed some time as well. So was Donna Papa in her 37th year at UNC, and then Annie in her second, Odyssey <laughs> in her first. Interesting mixture with the staff. Bump lines it foul, still three and two. Well, and Coach Papa just talked about how free and how much fun that opening weekend was when it was just 
the three of them. And that's not <laughs> a knock on the other couple of assistant coaches that weren't there because they are awesome coaches, great people. But there was just something about that opening weekend that Donna Papa talked about where it's like they're still trying to find that feel in that team that played loose and free and really well together. One of those many freshmen back is 3 2 is nudged away by Bump. It's a, a 27 player roster for North Carolina, Amanda. Eight freshmen, seven sophomores. So more than half the players on this roster are first or second years. And that makes you think the future of this Carolina program could be exceptionally bright. 3 2. That's ball four. Taylor Bump has not hit much this year, but she does lead the team in walks. And she just picked up her eighth. And for a player who has high expectations this season with Taylor Bump being a senior, just hitting 161 on the season, being able to find a way to get on base with her on-base percentage, still over 300, working that at bat to be the leadoff to find a way on, that's huge. Here's Lauren Esman. Esman attacks the first pitch and drills it into right field. And the throw from Jones is high. And that's going to allow Bump to go first to third safely. A gamble by Kiana Jones from shallow right field. Esman moved up to second. Bump takes the extra base to third. Yeah, Esman clearly looking to hit early in the count. Gets a pitch that she likes. The second baseman, Brooks, was actually moving toward the middle of the field. It opened up the right side of the field for a hit. Jones makes that throw to first, and it's errant. And good base running by Bump to go from first to third. Here's Sierra Kirsten with two on. And Kirsten attacks the first pitch. That's in the right field as well to score at least one run. The throw gets through the wickets of Green, and a second will come home. Michigan aggressive. North Carolina struggling defensively, and two runs score on the single by Kirsten and the error to give the Wolverines the lead. Another first pitch swing and hit off the Michigan bats that goes almost to an identical spot on the right side of the field. Kirsten able to go down and get her barrel to that one. And a couple of runs will score for Michigan. They're just capitalizing on the mistakes that UNC has made. That ball just got, literally got through the wickets of Green back behind the plate. UNC just need to settle down. This is becoming a recurring theme now for Michigan, which had four first pitch hits in just five innings against Elon yesterday. Back to back first pitch hits here in the second. And hey, the way Backus is pounding the strike zone, the approach makes sense for the Wolverines. Love the adjustments by them early in this game. If she's gonna attack the zone early, they're going up and being aggressive at the plate. After a visit at the mound, Audrey LeClaire. And Backus with her first first pitch ball of the game. For seven hitters, it's seen a first pitch strike. Not the case on the Phoenix, Arizona born LeClaire. And LeClaire lays down a bunt foul. At the moment, I scored a two-run single by Kirsten. I'm guessing an error will be added at some point. Two runs scored either that. way. <laughs> I've been waiting for that error to show up on stat yeah. broadcast. <laughs> Leclerc just two for 13. Does have three walks. Does have three RBIs. Couple of spark plug moments at the bottom of the lineup. And she pulls back on the possible bunt attempt here. She's ahead three and one. There's the new winningest coach in Division I of history, Carol Hutchins. Surpassed Mike Candrea over the weekend. And there's strike two from Bacchus. It's a nice change of speeds there with her change up. Completely fooling LeClaire. Love the way that she kept her arm speed up on that pitch. Got her way out in front. 
after a 3-1 changeup. Back to it on 3-2, and LeClaire just gets a piece. And that, if you're Michigan, you're taking notes off of what pitch Backus is throwing in those situations. It's a hitter's count, 3-1 on the pitch before that. She threw back-to-back -back change ups. Clearly, you're thinking, all right, she's starting to work that pitch in more, and that's a pitch that she's going to go too often. Would she dare throw it three times in a row? This one nubbed to the right side, and the great speed of LeClaire forces another misplay defensively for Carolina. Kirsten is in from second. It is 3-0 Wolverines. It's the oddest of plays happening for North Carolina because it's just they're trying to catch and throw. That's a tough play for Brooks, the second baseman. LeClaire obviously was going to be safe at first base anyway. But for some reason, Perkis is unable to catch it. It's hard to tell the angle there if she should have caught, caught it. But again, just UNC throwing the ball around. Ball one to Ella McVeigh. Official scoring has gone down as an E4. I'm with you. It's tough to tell the angle there. It certainly looked like a ball that was catchable by Perkins for what we saw. Well, and I thought that she would have run it out regardless of if the throw would have been made. I think it should have been a hit. And then error after that. Yeah. Infield single miscatch error would be my guess. We get a direct line to the official score at UNC. <laughs> we'll air our grievances. <laughs> McVeigh with a bunt. Good diving effort by Green, but I want to hit the yeah. ground first for strike two. Love that effort by Green, and that's what you want to see out of your defense when they're struggling to be able to catch and throw, make plays on defense. You want to see that extra bit of effort because that catch would have gone a long way if she would have been able to come away with an out. Trying to pick up her defense, which we think has committed three errors in this inning. The freshman McVeigh will test the defense again and sneak one through. A base hit for Ella McVeigh, and LeClaire pumps the brakes at third. First five have reached in the inning for Michigan. Well, the second to last regular season game for Coach K is only on the ACC Network and the ESPN app. And it's happening tonight. Fourth ranked Duke on the road against Pitt. Coach K against his old assistant, Jeff Capel. Eight Eastern, seven Central. Men's basketball presented by Geico on the ACC Network. Top of the lineup for Lexi Blair. An inning that began with a leadoff walk to bump. One of the lower batting averages on the Michigan team. Four singles have followed, three errors in there. I am making an official judgment that the LeClaire hit was a single. And either way, singles, errors, whatever the scoring is, Michigan has put pressure on the UNC defense. They've been aggressive running the bases. And the Tar Heels have not held up in the field here in the second. One one for Blair. Ball two. And a throwback at third is not there on LeClaire. Yeah, Michigan Kevin, a team coming into the season with really high hopes and was talked about a lot because of the fact that they have that pitching staff with Storaco and Bobian. But thinking too that their offense could start clicking, could start gelling a little bit more. Blair elevates this one. LeClaire with good speed at third. It's a shallow fly ball. She'll test the arm of Stubbs anyway and score. Well, Michigan has not held back running the bases in this inning. And on a shallow fly ball, LeClaire dashes home to make it for zip. Yeah, no surprise that she's going to be able to score in a sacrifice fly. Good execution by Lexi Blair just to drive the ball in the air to the outfield. I have to tell you, I haven't seen so many balls, so many throws get by people in a really, really long time. What is that, four now in this inning? Yeah, two from right, one from center, one from second. It's a Carolina team that's been pretty good in the field, too. Only seven errors, 982 fielding percentage in their first 15 games. It's 
Strike one to Ouija. I mean, maybe the Carolina scoring system is taking away a bunch of errors that would have been errors otherwise. I don't know. It's an oddity that's <laughs> happening right now. Probably that's a sack fly and an advancement of the throw uh, on the throw. Probably not an error there, but nonetheless, McVeigh did take second on the wide throw through. She's in scoring position for the freshman cohort Weidra. It seems like UNC's defense is playing so tight when really there's not been been put that much pressure on them speed wise in order to make these plays. Nice, solid dent where Weidra hit the padding behind home plate right there. <laughs> On a 1-2, she'll take one just outside. Yeah, against these lefties, Bacchus is just trying to pick on that outside corner with her curveball that she's spotting it up really well, but been impressed with the adjustments already early in this game that Michigan lefties have been able to make on that pitch to get their barrel down to it whenever it's closer to the zone. And Weidra takes one up out of the zone to run the count full. Seven pitch coming to Weidra. That's skied to center. Actually, the shortstop Jubis is there. And a routine second out, desperately needed by North Carolina defensively. That was the point for the center fielder, number 2030, Christina Burkhardt. Here's the ex-Tar Heel, Burkhardt. Second pitch single her first time. It was so cool to hear Carol Hutchins just rave about Burkhardt. I mean, she had this big smile on her face. She was glowing, talking about everything that she brings to this program. She loves her. She loves her family. She loves her sister, Ashley. This one nubbed a shortstop. And Jubis' throw is just there. So Burkhart, the former heel, the current Wolverine, one for two. Big second inning for Michigan. Four on the board against Carolina. There's my little nephew. He looks more like dad every time I see him. Dad is old. Right. So your message said you wanted to talk about insurance? I said I want you to talk about insurance. Well, most people know that bundling home and auto saves you money. Keep saying your words. But did you know that new customers who bundle and save with Progressive can save an average of $800? Sleeping baby. I love you too. You get a medium fries and a medium soft drink for free when you buy a McDonald's crispy chicken sandwich in the app, and it'll even arrive encased in a buttered bun and wrapped in silver. Like a crispy, juicy, tender present. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Well, just down the road in Durham history on Friday when Carol Hutchins of Michigan became the all-time winningest coach in Division I history. Michigan did it at the Duke tournament against former Wolverine Marissa Young for Duke, and Carroll got a jar of a whole lot of peanut M&Ms, which she'll throw to players after a home run sometimes, maize and blue M&Ms. Sure, it'll take Hutch a couple of days to dust off those, but another wonderful accomplishment in one of the great careers in the history of college softball. Carroll Hutchins, 37 years at the University of Michigan as a head coach, 38 overall, and she passed the great Mike Candrea, who retired last year, just this past weekend. This is in a year from Keanu Jones, and how to play for strike two. Amanda, you've been around the game a long time in different roles. Uh, Carol Hutchins, someone who has given so much to this game. When you think of the impact that she's made, what comes to mind? 
You know, I think about the competitiveness and just pure love of the game that she brings <laughs> every single year. I remember seeing them win the national championship in 2005, and that was probably my favorite World Series. Uh, well, last year probably would end up being my favorite because I feel like all the ups and downs of it, JMU's story, uh, nonetheless, but that 2005 national championship that they won, I remember just falling in love with that team. And mind you, I was a freshman in college. We didn't make it to the World Series that year, but I loved that Michigan team. And Hutch, of course, was a big part of it. And I, I love when she talks about the record. She says it belongs to the players and coaches. There's an out there recorded for Michigan, but she is one to just not try to take all the credit. She instantly goes back to all the players who have impacted her career, all of the assistants who have coached underneath her, including this longtime staff that has worked together with Bonnie Thole and Jen Brundage. They've been together for a, a lot of those wins, hundreds and hundreds of those wins. Bonnie Thole, 29 years out of Hutch's 37, associate head coach Jen Brundage, who's the pitching coach, 24th season. After the foul out, a strike to Taylor Green. A little bit of pop in the bat of late for Green, the senior, a transfer from Arkansas. On base in all but one of her 15 games. And Bobian off speed. On two from Megan Bobian, the fifth year senior. He's off to a strong start in the circle. Yeah, when that pitch is working for her, she definitely has a little pep in her step when she walks back to get back on the pitching rubber. That's her pitch, and when she sees swings and misses like that, it only fuels her. Five years at Michigan, Bobian. She's been one of the dominant forces in college softball, 14th in the nation last year with a 124 ERA. Started her career 63 and 12 first two seasons, and the numbers have continued to be excellent since. Oh, Bobby and her to fifth. I'm sorry, go ahead, Amanda. <laughs> she just goes to prove that you don't have to throw 68, 69, 70 miles an hour. She is a pitcher who, of course, comes from the left hand side, but has really owned her strengths of throwing with more spin and being able to change speeds in any count. Gets green out in front here. And a couple of pop outs to Esman. So, the point you make, I saw you post the other day on Instagram, something about pitchers wondering, do I need speed first or do I need movement? You don't need the kind of speed that maybe Montana Fouts has to succeed in this game. I think Bobian is a great example of that. In five years at Michigan, not overpowering hitters, but statistically her numbers are still overpowering. As she attacks Alex Brown with a first pitch strike. Yeah, I think that you realize, especially when you've been around the game long enough, there's not one way to win. And as a pitcher, your number one job is to throw strikes. So whatever, if that is a 58-mile-an-hour pitch, if that is a 72-mile-an-hour pitch, you can't win if you don't throw strikes. So ultimately, especially for young pitchers, that is the first thing you should think about is building a good foundation with solid mechanics, but then worrying about accuracy more than worrying about speed. And then I think that as you develop, you start to develop other pitches and other strengths to be able to get hitters out. But you don't have to be a pitcher that just strikes everybody out with a lot of speed. You can own your strengths and do it a different way. A couple of strikes here on Alex Brown, North Carolina left fielder. This position has been a revolving door for the Tar Heels this year. They've had a number of injuries in left field. Keanu Pierce, Sheila Thompson, Nisha Jordan had some struggles defensively. Brown's been out there. Started now five consecutive games under this great Carolina freshman class for Donna Papa. Bobian in search of a perfect second inning. A couple of pop-outs. And Brown 
Loops one to center field and Burkhardt. So three air outs for the All-American candidate in 2022, Megan Bobier. Hey, bud. Thanks for coming out to cheer me on. Dad, I'm, I'm always here. I'm always here for you, too. OK, go, Dad. <laughs> Thanks. No, everyone's passing you. In the oh, you got place. it, coach. Switch to progressive, and you can save hundreds. You know, like the sign says. Arby's, two for six bucks every day. Crispy fish with that spicy kick. Two of those things for just six bucks. Arby's, we have the meat. Michigan jumped out to a 4-0 lead in a crazy second inning. A whole bunch of hits, bunch of first pitch swings, four hits, but North Carolina, Amanda, had some major trouble defensively on what were not always the most difficult plays. Yeah, they weren't. And you have to remember on defense, at its simplest form, it's a game of catch and throw. And the part that UNC struggled with was definitely the catch part. Sure, the throws were a little bit off, but just looking a little bit unsure and letting a lot of throws get past them leads to extra bases for Michigan in those four runs. Had been a good start this season defensively for North Carolina. In inning where we think there were three errors, again, having some communication trouble with the stat broadcast, but certainly three plays not made defensively, a wide throw on a sacrifice fly. And the Wolverines are up big on the freshman Bacchus. Middle of the order here. And Hannah Carson drives one to Brown and left for a routine first out. Do love the demeanor of Lily Bacchus, the freshman pitcher for UNC. Even in that inning where her defense was struggling, you could just tell that it was a little bit tense defensively for UNC. She has kept the exact same demeanor, the exact same presence, and just tried to keep plugging along, throwing strikes, and getting outs. Taylor Bump takes one a little bit off the zone. Bump kicked off that rally in the second. Eight pitch leadoff walk. It's a very inexperienced North Carolina pitching staff. Bacchus and Carly Myrtle, two freshmen of pitch. Talia Hannipol, a sophomore transfer. This one is drilled by Bump and off the glove of Stubbs in center field. Bump will head for second and slide in there safely. Taylor Bump has got to feel really good about her couple of at-bats that she's had here tonight. She walked in her first at-bat and then is able to get her hands up and into this pitch. That is not an easy pitch to hit at all, but She's able to get on plane with it and drive it to the left center field gap for extra bases. Good piece of hitting there by the senior to find a way to move herself into scoring position right away. You think single and error on Stubbs, or is that a double for you? Oh. I'd say double. 
With uh, I'd say single in E8. I guess you're much nicer than me. I, I think I'm just trying to uh, react to what I think is going to pop up in the stat broadcast tonight. That's true. It's a well-struck ball, but another play that could have been made that was not. Off the glove of Stubbs in center. Bump is at second, and Lauren Espen's got a 1-1 count. You know, sometimes, Kevin, you just have those weird games as a team and as a player where you just kick the ball around and nobody's able to make, not just the routine plays, but like that play that got by, or that ball that got by Stubbs, it wouldn't have been a necessarily routine play. It would have been a slightly above average play for her to have stopped it, but that's what you got to do to beat a ranked team. Coming into your house, you've got to make the plays. Westman yanks it foul for strike two. Freshman Backus looked largely unfazed out there despite the chaos unfolding. She just misses for ball three to Esmond. It's a good eye by Esmond to take that pitch. Another curve ball that's just off the plate. I mean, when you watch back his pitch against these lefties, so many pitches are going to that outside corner right at the knees. Just trying to find it. See if she goes back there, 3-2. Instead, it's inside. And a good eye by Esmond on the other side of the plate. Two on, one out for Michigan. Well, Monday we'll have the final two episodes of the tournament, the history of ACC men's basketball. Episode nine highlighting the years of 1998 to 2008 at 9 Eastern, then the finale breaking down 2009 through 2020. Of course, the expansion of the ACC in that period. It's been a great docu-series so far. Those episodes, every episode available on the ESPN app. ACC tournament this year, men's basketball, starting next week in Brooklyn. See if Coach K can go out with one more championship. This is Sierra Kirsten. Did she go? She did not, according to Eddie Hall at third. Good check. Job of holding back. RBI single for Kirsten in the second inning. Off speed for strike two. Being able to throw that time and time again for a strike. She's getting swings and misses on it. She's getting called strikes. She just really has good command of that changeup tonight. Stopped by Taylor Green. Mm. <laughs> You've seen Green show some real reflexes back there behind the plate. Saved a wild pitch there. Grilled off the wall and foul territory. Still two and two for Kirsten, designated player tonight. Yeah, with two on and you already scored four, you're Michigan, you want to continue to pile on to that lead, especially because offense is the one thing that Coach Hutch talked to us about of just wanting more RBI, want RBIs, wanting more run production. They scored 25 runs in their last two games and now four tonight. Yeah, for Michigan, the struggles have come with runners in scoring position. By and large, Carol Hutchins' team has put runners on base. Just looking for more well-hit balls with players on base, and they certainly had that in the second. And here in the third, Kirsten gets a piece. Yeah, just really focusing on quality at bats. She said that was the biggest thing offensively that she wanted her team to come into this road trip to work on. Michigan high hopes. It's just that offensive side of their game that as a fan who follows the sport that you want to see few more runs scored because you know that they have the pitching to be able to back it up. Eighth pitch coming. 
And back has struck her out. This pitch is so good. She could throw it four or five times and hit a bat and still get swings like that. Kirsten way in front of that pitch because of the way that back has sold it. And she couldn't believe it with that smile after she struck out. Like, wow, that was a pretty good pitch. I was way out in front of that. She knew how fooled she was based on the look on her face <laughs> as LeClaire takes ball one. I'm impressed by the confidence, not just of Bacchus, but the young coaches in the Carolina dugout. Odyssey and Anna to call so many of those off-speed pitches in this inning for true freshmen. And she has to have a lot of confidence, too, with who is calling her pitches. Just saw Odyssey Alexander play in last year's Women's College World Series, and now she gets to call your pitches. I mean, how cool is that? A big pickup for UNC. Strike one to LeClaire. Interesting, too, that Odyssey Alexander gets to call pitches for someone who is not the same kind of pitcher as Odyssey Alexander. We're not seeing Bacchus pound this team with rise balls the way we saw Odyssey pound Oklahoma with rise balls last year. Yeah, that fascinates me. You've done some pitching coaching, some teaching. Like The difference in calling a game for somebody who doesn't throw like you, I have to imagine that's a really interesting challenge. Yeah, you're you're absolutely right. Because you're going to want to go to your own strengths. But a competitor like Odyssey Alexander and also Annie Aldretti, like they're going to be able to spend time in the bullpen, be able to have a communication or an open line of communication with Lily Backus and know what she wants to throw. They're going to be able to figure it out again. A catcher and a pitcher working together to call pitches with this freshman. And another strikeout for Backus. The pitch calls were good. The pitch execution was better. A couple of strikeouts for the freshman. Get out of the jam in the third. Your home for adventure. Your home for romance. Your home for big savings. Hey, Mom, have you seen my... Ew. Because when you bundle home and auto with Progressive, your home is a savings paradise. Bundles Progressive. Your home for savings. America's bit. Thursday night, 10 Eastern, the Nothing But Net crew will be in Greensboro to wrap up the ACC Women's Tournament's second round matchups, highlights, and full breakdowns of each game. Hopefully we can get a breakdown of that kid on the scooter. Analysis and insight you can only get on ACC Network and the ESPN app. Were you a scooter kid, Scarborough? Oh, yeah. That was yeah? the nickname of mine growing up. I'm serious. Your nickname was what, Scooter Kid? No, <laughs> Scooter. <laughs> Are you, your nickname was really Scooter growing up? Scooter Scarborough? <laughs> oh, you know, one of those mother nicknames. But nobody knew that until right here in this Michigan-North Carolina softball game. So Why was that your nickname? Because I would have a scooter that I would. But it was different than, like, what that little boy was driving. It was, like, a real scooter. <laughs> so... That kid has a fake scooter is what you're implying. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. I'm going to weasel my way out and just talk more about Bogey and Shinja. Yeah, go for it. <laughs> Stick to your strengths, my friend. Stick to your strengths. Exactly. Change has been awfully good for Megan so far. Two innings, one a hit. Face the minimum. Working on Lexi Godwin here, and a rise ball is high. Lexi Godwin in the DP spot for North Carolina. She's played a little bit this year. Only her fifth plate appearance of the season. 0 for 3, hit by a pitch. And takes a strike.
It's wild that Michigan is approaching their third at bat and UNC is yet to get one time through their order. Michigan has been at bat in this game for 31 minutes. And for North Carolina, they've been at bat for just about eight minutes after the first two innings. So time of possession is rather heavily slanted toward the maize and blue as compared to the Carolina blue. It's in the air to first. Every one of Bobian's seven outs has come on a ball in the air. This one a line out to Esmond. Yeah, she's done a good job of working some of these hitters inside, jamming them, unable to get their hands out and extended. Three pop fly outs to second, one, excuse me, to first base, one to second base. Not very many balls hit out of the infield. Just the fly out by Brown. And a second. Katie Perkins looks at ball one. Starting first baseman looking to get going, Perkins. Just five out of 29 with a couple of walks. Here's the first ground ball of the game. Esman knocks it down and recovers near the bag. That is not an easy play for Esman. It's to her backhand because she's a left-handed first baseman. And this ball is just hugs the line and takes her right into the first base bag where I know she could have tripped. We've seen wilder things. We've seen people trip over backs before, but is able to get to it, keep it in front, and be able to get that out. Good defense by Esman. Something that Carol Hutchins will particularly love to see. Her defense has been a little up and down to start this year. Esman's made three errors at first. Wouldn't know it by the looks of that last play. Came to Michigan as a pitcher and hitter. Warren Esman became a full-time hitter last year, now focusing exclusively on first base. Destiny Middleton. Number nine hitter takes ball two. Middleton nine for 45 on the season. Three walks, six strikeouts. Shows a bunt and takes ball three. Four pitch walk out of the ninth spot. First walk issued by Bobian today. Couple of bats in a row where Bobian is falling behind, not using that first pitch strike. And Destiny Middleton, who is a veteran player, seen a lot of action in a UNC uniform, a good job of drawing a walk. And now turn the order over a second time through now that they're going to. Get a look at Bobian, looking to make some adjustments and try to get on the board. Second time for Bree Stubbs. Stubbs attacks the first pitch for strike one. Fouled out to the catcher her first time, Bree Stubbs. Carolina leader in on-base percentage. Tough night defensively so far in center. Trying to make up for it. Ignited two out rally. There goes the runner as Stubbs sprays one to short and McVeigh is there. Middleton was off and running. Now she'll just jog back to the dugout. All Michigan after three.
Hey, bud. Thanks for coming out to cheer me on. Dad, I'm, I'm always here. I'm always here for you, too. Okay. Go, Dad. <laughs> Thanks. No, everyone's passing you. In the... oh, you got Please. it, Coach. Switch to progressive and you can save hundreds. You know, like the sign says. Arby's, two for six bucks. Every day. Arby's classic roast beef. Adored by billions. Two of those things for just six bucks. Arby's, we have the meat. Should be a big softball year for the ACC. Florida State said Cheryl one win away from a national championship last year. Valerie Cagle did it all at the plate in a circle. Duke won the ACC postseason tournament, and Keely Rochard was as dominant as anybody. The Virginia Tech ace returns. There are four legitimate Oklahoma City contenders at the top of the ACC, and I don't know if that's something we've ever said or said in a long time. But this is the burgeoning softball power in the land, this conference. And North Carolina finds itself in the middle of with a young team. Yeah, there are a lot of reasons to be excited about ACC softball because every year it has just gotten stronger and stronger. You're seeing bigger stadiums, better pitching, bigger recruits. And it is, I mean, the four teams that we just named it, I mean, even Louisville beat Arkansas last weekend. Just continuing to get stronger all throughout. Georgia Tech has put together a strong team. Same thing with NC State, Notre Dame. I and mean, we just talked about four of them, but this conference is really getting deeper and deeper. There's a strike from Bacchus to Ella McVeigh. You made a bold prediction on the first seven innings podcast of the year, which is available wherever you get podcasts. <laughs> You feel like this is a year where the ACC is going to send two teams to Oklahoma City? Yeah, I think that there's a chance that they could even get three in. I think two to me, you're feeling good about that. Prediction three is one of those predictions that you might be pushing it a little bit, but I don't think it's out of the question. That's the top ten. Virginia Tech played UCLA tight in a Super Regional last year, lost two games to one. Duke was a, a host team, but actually had to go to Georgia. Had a tough draw last year in the postseason. McVeigh to shortstop, and her counterpart Jubas throws her out. Of course, Florida State, still a team that has yet to lose. One of four unbeaten teams. Let's see if they can name them. We got Oklahoma, Alabama, Florida, and FSU who have yet to lose this season. Who's impressed you the most in the non-Oklahoma division? Because what they've done, I think, has been scorched earth good again. Out of those other three teams, who to you has been the standout unit? Quietly, Florida. Yeah? I think that they are sneakily sitting ranked in the top. But three, I think them and Florida State kind of go back and forth. But we're not talking about Florida as much as we're talking about Oklahoma and Alabama and even FSU. But they have put together a really good team that a good freshman in Kendra Falby. And a freshman pitcher as well. I thought you would say Florida State because of how much you saw them in Clearwater. But to your point, they got the national stage. They had a great ESPN spotlight beat UCLA. Florida, even though Florida's a power, maybe a little bit more under the radar to start. Lost some great players from last year. This is Lexi Blair to second. And Brooks throws her out. One thing I know for sure, those Florida-Florida State games when they play a home and away are going to be so good later on this season. Here is the top ten. There are the four unbeaten teams at the start. So if you're an ACC fan, this is not something you're used to seeing in softball. FSU at three, Virginia Tech at six. Clemson in year three as a softball program is kicking it at number nine. Yeah, and the two losses that Virginia Tech has in their record were to Alabama. They had to go into Tuscaloosa and play in the Rhodes House, so a really challenging environment for Virginia Tech. But they hung in there because of the fact that they have Keely Rochard. They have a freshman in Emma Limley who just was like, wow, lights out with her rise ball. Great one-two punch for Virginia Tech because of that freshman that adds to their staff. Freshman Annabelle Weidra batting here with two down. 
In the air to center field. That drops in front of Stubbs. Weidra's got great speed. She thought about second. She'll hold it first with a two-out single. Didn't look like Stubbs got the best jump on this. Took the wrong angle. Kind of went more sideways than forwards. Trying to read it off the bat. I feel like it. That's one maybe later on in season. Remember, we're still pretty early on season. Just March 1st. But I feel like that's one that maybe she ends up catching toward the end of the year. And here's a player who used to play center field in this stadium, Christina Burkhart. And even though Stubbs has played here a lot, she really played right field mainly for Carolina last year. This young woman, Burkhart, was the Tar Heel center fielder, was in the outfield for a long time, two-time All-ACC player, the rare graduate transfer to Michigan. There goes the runner, Weidra, and she is safely ahead of the throw. Annabelle Weidra, six for seven as a base dealer this year. Like this call by Carol Hutchins, maybe that's why she's won so many games, because she's willing to take this chance, knowing that Burkhart, her best hitter this season, is up at the plate. Weidra into scoring position, trying to get her another RBI. Burkhardt chases strike two from the freshman Bacchus. Bacchus ended the third inning with a couple of strikeouts. With runners on base. Won't do it here. She'll end it with a flyout. And Burkhardt is one for three. Good job in the middle innings by Bacchus. Carolina trying to get on the board next. USAA is made for the safe pilots. For Mac, who can come to a stop with barely a bottle. Lucia, who announces her intentions even if no one's there. And Sergeant Moore, who leaves room for her room. With USAA Safe Pilot, when you drive safe, you can save up to 30% on your auto insurance. Get a quote and start saving. USAA, what you're made of, we're made for. America's been fun. Pretty breezy three innings for Megan Bobian tonight. The last number might surprise you. No strikeouts through three innings. Uh, but there simply have not been a lot of hard-hit balls, Amanda, by this Carolina team. And... Bobian has controlled the game despite not getting a lot of swings and misses. Yeah, she's just so difficult to square up because of how she changes speeds and is able to have that deceptive spin. Not going to overpower you with 69, 70 miles an hour, and that's okay. She's able to spin it so well, make it move, and drop it down the speed. Only two Carolina runners. This was one of them in Brooks. Had an infield single in the first inning. Destiny Middleton's walk provided the only other UNC base runner. Tough night for Donna Papa's heels. And coach going for her 1300th win at UNC. Brooks to third. It gets through the third baseman bump, and there's no chance for McVay at that point. So Brooks is on again. And Taylor Bump, the third baseman, knows that Skylar Brooks has speed. Look how far up the line she's playing. So that ball got on her in a hurry. In fact, it hit off of her shin and bounced to McVeigh. You can see how close she was. And that slap had a lot more power than her first at bat whenever it was a soft slap to shortstop. And Bump is going to see if, if she got hit with, on her shin, if she can run that one off. This is not a position for the faint of heart. Third base, particularly in softball, particularly against the kind of power slappers that you see in the game. Bump looks to be okay. Stick in there for Sarah Jubis. And 
UNC puts the leadoff batter on for the first time tonight. And Jubas takes one in the dirt. Brooks will stick it first. Which that in itself was something that Coach Pop had talked to us about that they focused on a lot in the fall and a lot in the spring. She called it the lows, I think is what she referred to it as, but getting the lead off on LOO. Big number that they pay attention to inside their dugout. Jubas, the number two batter to third here. And Bump will get the out at second. Bump to Weidra, 5-4. Jubas replaces Brooks at first. I thought that that was a ground ball that they could have turned two on. Got to her pretty quickly if there would have been a little bit more sense of urgency. Ball got to Weidra and she didn't even really look at first base. So maybe I'm underestimating the speed of Sarah Jubas down the line. But I thought maybe they could have turned it. You may not be underestimating it because Caroline is going to bring in a pinch runner here for Jubas. It's going to be Anisha Jordan to run here for Jubas. This is Kiana Jones who did get a piece on strike one. Important to remember too that for UNC to get back into this game, they're their type of offense has not been via the long ball. They've only had one player that has hit a home run, and you're looking at her, so if there was a high chance to hit a home run, you feel like it might be in this situation with Kiana Jones up, but they're going to be more of a team that has to manufacture with small ball, with speed, stealing bases, taking extra bases, and putting pressure on the defense. Colby and keeping the ball low to start. She does not give up many. Megan Bobian, about 0.4 home runs per seven innings. That's less than one home run every two complete games in her Michigan career. Off speed for a strike. Throw from Carson is in time. And the pinch runner, Jordan, cut down by Hannah Carson throwing from her knees. Again, UNC is going to try to push it a little bit to move a runner into scoring position, but that throw by Hannah Carson was on the money to McVeigh, the shortstop. Got her right there on the shoulder. Michigan expecting it and being able to come up to make the throw, the catch, and the out. Now caught five of 12 attempted base stealers this year. Did she go? She did, and Bobian finally collects her first strikeout. Took her until the fourth inning, but he's still throwing a shutout in Chapel Hill. Your home for adventure. Your home for romance. Your home for big savings. Have you seen my... Ew. Because when you bundle home and auto with Progressive, your home is a savings paradise. Bundles Progressive. Your home for savings. Hey, Toby, can we get a couple of the games on? Not that kind of TV. These are digital menus to let people know that breakfast is half off when you order through the app. So, no games. Choose wisely. Choose Wendy's. Official breakfast of March Madness. One of North Carolina's greatest players of all time, Brittany Pickett, here tonight in Chapel Hill. Legendary career for the Tar Heels. She was a hitter, she was a pitcher. You see her all-time numbers at UNC. And they lost her this year, Amanda, and Lily Backus has, has pitched well by and large outside of a weird second inning tonight, but it's so hard to replace Pickett for a team that only returned one pitcher who threw for UNC last year. And that pitcher is Hannah George, who threw so little she had a redshirt season. So a lot to replace in a circle for Donna Papa. 
Yeah, and really young, as you mentioned, or inexperienced in the circle, not getting as many innings as somebody like Brittany Pickett whenever she was healthy for this UNC team. And even Lily Backus in the circle, she's a freshman, but she should still actually be in high school. She graduated high school early after December and now finds herself on UNC's campus competing against these collegiate teams. Just wild to think about that she's just in high school. And a Carson golfs one to center and gone. That was a ball that seemed to be a foot off the ground, and it just kept rising. Carson continues her power surge, her team leading third home run, and it's 5-0 Michigan. Well, one thing to know about this field at UNC is that it's only 200 feet to center field. So Hannah, Car excuse me, yeah, Hannah Carson is able to go down and get a pitch, which Michigan has looked really good down in the zone. And it's just truly a line drive that sneaks over the O in Carolina for a home run. What a beautiful swing by Hannah Carson, just going up, trying to hit the ball hard, looking for a pitch to hit, driving out of the park. For Hannah Carson now, seven consecutive games with an RBI. In her last seven, she's nine for 26 extra base hits in the last seven games for the senior from Michigan. Taylor Bump drives one foul. Really good day for Bump. Leadoff walk in that four on second. Scorched a double in third. The third extra base hit of her season. And you can start to feel it here. The last couple of days, the competition not as good for Michigan. Now you're back in the power five. The swings are good. The approach is good. The offense is starting to look more like what we expected this year for Michigan. Because in their losses, they have been fairly impotent offensively and I know some of that was against good teams but Carol Hutchins said we don't need to fix our swings the swings I see in batting practice are great we need to change our approach in game yeah and they've only lost to ranked teams we have those five losses on the season and one Two, three of them have been to top, not only ranked teams, but to top eight teams, top seven teams. What a challenging schedule. Ball three to Buck. If we could get a replay of your facial expression on that, the pitcher in you <laughs> tried to put a little English on it. Yeah, the pitcher in me wants that every time and Bacchus has proven that she can throw that change up both sides of the plate in any count three two off speed again, and strikeout number four for Lily Backus. Yeah, you can tell that Backus is starting to settle into this game, a backdoor curveball that cuts back across the outside corner, and she gets Bump to swing through it. Bump, who has seen her very well, Backus getting her in her third at bat. Every game this season, Backus has struck out more batters than she's walked. Tonight, four strikeouts, two walks. Might sound strange to say this. She's given up five runs in four and a third, but I think there is a lot to like about Lily Backus' approach today. Yeah, and you can see why the coaching staff has shown a lot of belief in her early in the season, giving her starts against the biggest teams that they've played. if I thought that she went on this, but that's a great call by the third base umpire. I don't know how they do it live because every time live, I feel like I'm wrong and then I see the replay, I'm like, oh, so that's what actually happened. Right. <laughs> <laughs> 
See, the thing you don't know is the umpires have futuristic technology. They have contact lenses that show them the replay immediately after the swing. <laughs> Wouldn't that be actually yeah. kind of nice for them? <laughs> it's like the automated ball strike system Major League Baseball wants to use if they ever play again. Eddie Hall is the third base umpire tonight. By the way, good job by him and the rest of this crew. I really like what we've seen out of Lily Backus coming from that left-hand side. And talked about Brittany Pickett. She's another left-handed pitcher. And also Danielle Spaulding, who played at UNC, an All-American pitcher hitter as well. They're That's starting to be two stays alive. a little trend here. And we talked to Coach Papa about it. Like, wait, putting it together. There was Spaulding, and there was Pickett, and now there's Backus. And she's like, yep, yeah. and there's another one coming. So... A little um, pattern here that you're seeing from UNC, very similar to what you see out of Oklahoma, who has a history of left-handed pitchers. UNC starting to have that trend, too. Pitch number 100 from young number 99 is high. Three and two for Esman, who has singled and walked. Six full count for Bacchus tonight. And she gets out of it with another strikeout. Nesman will run it out. And Green throws her out. Well, we are just an hour and 37 minutes away from the penultimate regular season game in Mike Krzyzewski's career. Duke jumped from seventh to fourth in the rankings after the chaos in college basketball this past weekend. Blue Devils are in pit to take on Jeff Capel's Panthers tonight, 8 Eastern, 7 Central, right here on ACC Network. Carolina men's basketball team had quite the scare yesterday. They did overtime to beat Syracuse and survive what would have been a terrible loss. UNC appears to be on the right side of the bubble right now. See if anybody can challenge Duke at the Barclays Center next week, ACC Tournament. Here, Kirsten, big single to open the scoring in that four-run second. Six out of her last 13. She's driven in seven in her last four games. Good swing on it here. Out to center field and off the very top of the fence. Kirsten oh so close to a third home run in four games. And instead she'll take a standing double. Starting to see some power out of these Michigan swings and Kirsten was able to get a pitch that is up about bell tie and just was able to barrel it up. I thought this had a chance to get out of here. It hits the very tough and bounces back. She doesn't get the bounce out. It bounces back in. Good enough for a double. But again, it's 200 feet all the way around the field at UNC. So very short fences, particularly up the middle of the field. You're used to seeing 200 down the lines in college softball stadiums, but oftentimes center field goes to 210, 220. Thanks for a short alleys and, and center and dead center field. For Kirsten, did not homer last year as a starter, had just a 296 slugging percentage, two home runs and two games at Duke. Maybe an inch away from another one here. Pinch hitter is Molina Livingston to take ball one. Funny listening to Kirsten after that home run at Duke, she said, I, I kind of didn't believe it when that one went out. And all of a sudden, she is Michigan's big bopper. Oh. 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 
Lena Livingston, Penn State graduate transfer. Valuable ad for Carol Hutchins. She's a grad transfer, but has another year of eligibility. Only three years in State College. Schools that don't get a lot of impactful transfers because of how tough their standards are academically. Burkhart and Livingston, the key transfers here at Michigan. North Carolina, and frankly, they don't get a lot of transfers either. These are two very difficult schools to get into. You know, Kevin, I like the pace that back his pitches with two. It helps keep her defense in it. She doesn't waste a lot of time in between pitches, just really kind of takes a breath, gets back on the pitching rubber, and is ready to take the signal from the dugout and then look at the armband, which is just so popular right now in our sport. It's three and two with two outs. I don't know if I want to engage you on the armband conversation <laughs> right now, but at some point we should have that because yeah. it is... Um, it, it feels like it's the exception, not the rule, when you don't wear an armband right now. Yes. Northwestern notably being the exception. Michigan's Big Ten rival. This ball is drilled by Livingston. It will find the gap and bring in a sixth Michigan run. Molina Livingston off the bench, an RBI double to score Kirsten. It's 6 nothing. This is what you'd love to see as a coach. You have a pinch hitter come in. She works the count, has a quality at bat, and then is able to take this outside pitch just right where it's pitched on the right side of the plate, on the right side of the field for extra bases. Livingston proving to Carol Hutchins early that you can rely on me coming off the bench with a runner in scoring position. Michigan had been just two for 17 with a walk and an RBI as a unit pinch hitting. This year, Livingston doubles the RBI total. And a big swing off the bench, and now another pinch hitter, Kiki Thole, will try to extend the good times. Look at all the production down at the bottom of the order for Michigan, being the ones that are getting it done. And the nine hitter, Thole, with a blast to center, off the top of the line. She got the bounce that Kirsten didn't get. And Michigan is in run rule position with a four run fifth. I mean, Michigan just so fired up right now. And wouldn't you be too? Such good at bats here, these last couple of hitters, first Livingston and then Thole, getting a pitch that's up in the zone. She knows that it's more of a mistake. She goes up looking to hit, and this time Michigan gets the bounce. It doesn't bounce back in, it bounces out of here. And now suddenly, quickly, Michigan is now just three outs away from winning this game. Carly Myrtle, the new Carolina pitcher. She'll take the circle when we return. Your home for adventure. Your home for romance. Your home for big savings. Hey, Mom, have you seen my... Ew. Because when you bundle home and auto with Progressive, your home is a savings paradise. Bundles Progressive. Your home for savings. America's been surge has put Michigan in a run rule lead if they can get three outs without allowing a run in the bottom of the fifth four runs second open the scoring four run fifth here Hannah Carson started the inning with a home run just saw Kiki Fold hit a pinch hit home run off the bench some good moments for Lily Backus but ultimately gives up seven earned eight runs total in four and two thirds new pitcher is Carly Myrtle Myrtle against Lexi Blair, out of the leadoff spot for Michigan. Now the freshman pitcher, only three appearances, but has pitched brilliantly. 
Two runs allowed in 15 innings. Michigan has been so aggressive offensively in this game. Multiple hits on a first pitch. That last home run by Thole was on the first pitch. And scoring with two outs, too. Remember, it was that, it seems like a long time ago now, but there was that Carson home run and then two strikeouts. Backus looked like she was settling into the inning after that home run. And then since then, three extra base hits in a row. Five to base nine with two outs. Yes, yeah, seven, eight, nine spot, two. I mean, you look at the bottom third of this lineup, Amanda. Kirsten, two for three, double in an RBI. The player and the pinch hitter Livingston each with a hit. McVeigh and the pinch hitter Tholex. Six hits out of the bottom three batters. And this is the leadoff batter, Blair. A well hit ball right to Brown. So, Megan Bobian is three outs away from a complete game in five innings. Michigan and a run rule. The scenes looks at Virginia Tech's wrestling team and the co-ed Notre Dame fencing team. Looking at the lives of the student athletes, coaches, staff, parents, and fans. It all starts at 8 Eastern right here on ACC Network in the ESPN app. Four run fifth inning for Michigan. Ellie Sealer was the pinch hitter flat out for Lexi Blair to end that inning. And now with an eight run lead, Michigan is just three outs away from a run rule win. Would be their second straight eight run five inning win. They beat Elon 11 to three yesterday just down the road. First pitch swing for Taylor Green and a foul ball against Megan Bobian. And I think that Bobian has looked really strong in this outing for Michigan. Came in with a 3.30 ERA and granted it's still early but that ERA continuing to drop as she just gets stronger and stronger in this game. Now it's below three. I think that we'll continue to see that ERA drop throughout the season. Two strikes on Green, number five hitter for Carolina. Toby in a preseason second team All American by the folks at D1 Softball. What a stat for Michigan's offense. First 13 games, they scored 33 runs in 13 games. Last three games, they've scored 33 runs. So offense starting to click and starting to get more comfortable and confident in their EBs. What would you want to see if you're a fan of any other Big Ten team? Remember last year, it was a conference-only schedule for the Big Ten teams in the regular season because of COVID and travel concerns. Michigan had a great year. Big Ten only play, 36-6 regular season. And then they felt like they got a really difficult draw. They felt like they got too difficult of a draw at Washington. Washington also felt like they got a terrible draw and probably both were right. Washington was the 16 seed to great shock and surprise. Michigan, one of the top unseeded teams. They played a great regional round and the Huskies prevailed against Bobian and the Wolverines. Yeah, but really it's that experience that they can draw from entering this season. And I'm sure it was tough to see that come up on Selection Sunday, who they would be paired with and having to travel to Seattle and Michigan could have been a deserving team to even host a regional, and then they found themselves facing a number 16 seed Washington that probably shouldn't have been in that position to be the 16 overall seed. So it was a grueling regional final game, but Washington ended up prevailing, and I think they got to play Oklahoma in Supers. Mm -hmm. Washington came from behind against Bobby and Michigan at a 4 nothing lead. I'm going to put something out in the world right now. I know it's March 1st. Let's, can we not only use the RPI to select the seeds this year? <laughs> Good luck with that one. Yeah. That ball's drilled by Green right to LeClaire. And Michigan's defensive positioning has been on point tonight. Yeah, it has. And that's where you see that 
Bobian is mature because at this point it was a full count. You have an eight run lead. Just challenge Taylor Green. Make her get herself out. And even with the defensive position of Michigan, good things are going to happen when you throw strikes and challenge a hitter. And it went her way for that first out. Carolina just two hits, one walk. Both hits infield singles from Brooks. There is a strike to Alex Brown. You know, we mentioned for Michigan the devastation of the season ending loss last year up in Seattle. Huskies came from behind to win that game. Bobian's in her fifth year, extra year because of COVID. There are a few fifth year players on this team. And they came back by and large because this group has not made it to Oklahoma City. That's the standard for Michigan. They haven't been to the Women's College World Series since 2016. That's their longest drought since their first appearance in 1995. And I think that when you have the pitching staff anchored by Megan Bobian and Alex Duraco, you expect to be there even more. And this is a team that they continue to progress defensively and play strong D back behind their pitchers and score a few runs, but a little bit better offensively. You might see them there. Good chance. It's going to be and tough, though, in the Big Ten with the way that Northwestern is playing and the way that Daniel Williams is pitching. That Northwestern team looks really strong. So interested to see how Big Ten conference play goes and who ends up winning the Big Ten. Did you see them in person in Clearwater, Northwestern? Yes, I did. And they are gritty and feisty and use every single pitch, every single out that they have left. There's a ground ball to second, and Michigan is one out away from a win. Wolverine's going to head to Kentucky after this, continue their spring break trip. Probably see Bobby and pitch a couple more times there in Kentucky's tournament. Just the one strikeout today. But no matter. And she is one out away from a five inning shutout facing Lexi Godwin. I know this might not surprise you, but I am for sure going to be watching Michigan and Kentucky play this weekend. I think that that is a Awesome matchup. Kentucky, a team that's 13 and 1. Should be on your ESPN app for you to be able to tune in. Godwin to third, and that'll do it. Bump makes the catch, and Megan Bobian completes a five inning shutout, and Michigan completes a run rule win. Back to back run rule wins in North Carolina for the Wolverines. Megan Bovian, just 60 pitches in that shutout. And the Michigan offense, Kevin, you can tell they are just gaining momentum. They're gaining confidence. They're really starting to click. Again, I can't wait for the series.